Yeah, the Red Lotus had three points of research origin. The first was a, a lunch with a friend of mine in my church here in Lincoln, who's about a guy, the guy is about 15 years older than me. Ken Burns' remarkable Vietnam War special had recently begun airing, and so our conversation naturally gravitated there. And I started asking him questions and then more questions. And all of a sudden, he was telling me stories that were breaking my heart. Not the stories of combat, which were horrifying enough. The stories of the children with birth defects in Vietnam. The stories of the Vietnamese civilians who were using things like American jet fuel to cook, and in at least one case, accidentally incinerating herself. And I began to think I want to try to book about the Vietnam War. Not the actual battles, because heaven knows Tim O'Brien and Carl Merlantis and Jet Dennis Johnson have already given us that. But something about the legacy of the war. And so I went to Vietnam and I went on a bike tour because I love biking. And one of my bike guys, bike guides, was a wonderful guy and we were biking alone together a lot. And I asked him what his parents did during what we call the Vietnam War and he calls the American War. And his parents were both Viet Cong. He said, basically, they would build the Ho Chi Minh Trail, you would bomb it, they would build it, you would bomb it, and this went on for years. And after the war, they married, and they both were so good at construction that they got involved with a construction firm in Hanoi and have built so many of the buildings in that incredible city. And that was the second moment. And then the third, on that bike tour, one of the other cyclists was a hospital administrator and she asked me, what is the opposite of a hospice? And I thought I was so clever. I said, uh, NICU, a neonatal intensive care unit. And she said, not a bad guess, but wrong. It's an emergency. In a hospice, we do all that we can to allow people to die. In an emergency room, we do all that we can to keep them alive. And I knew what I wanted to do. Vietnam War, bike tour, emergency room and I was off and running on the novel. Most likely to make you ask your friends who are doctors really weird questions. I, I mean, I, I had a great time interviewing ER doctors because they've all got amazing stories. For example, this is not the Guinness Book of World Records because I don't think they've ever categorized it, but the record for most Legos in a little boy's stomach, 63. Or, or what are the most likely reasons you are going to go to an emergency room in New York City on the weekend? Number one, slicing a bagel. Number two, tripping over your pet. I was not. I went to five different schools in six years. I was always that new kid on the block with his fingers pressed against the glass, a la Scott Fitzgerald, wondering why he wasn't invited to the party. I had friends. I, I mean, I don't give you the impression that I was the ultimate freaks and geeks outcast. I, I wasn't, but I was always the new kid trying to figure it out, so I was never going to be a superlative anything. Scott Fitzgerald certainly thought that the best writers were the outsiders because they were always having out-of-body experiences, so to speak, and watching the world. I do think good novelists and good memoirists are terrific observers and terrific listeners. There are all those great stories about you know, the Anne Lamotts of the world who constantly are writing down overheard dialogue and overheard conversation. I know in my experience, I am fundamentally an introvert who is capable when necessary of being an extrovert, but I'm, I'm really happy just kind of watching the world and writing about it.